In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the DSP processing options with Metric Halo interfaces. All of our boxes come with a 2D card, which is a DSP processor inside the interface that lets you run plugins directly on the hardware. This takes some of the processing load off your computer as well as letting you work in a near zero latency environment. You access the plugins through the inserts in the mixer, just like most common DAWs. And as you can see, we have a number of categories, but a lot of the plugins are grayed out and unavailable. That's because these are only available with the Plus DSP license, which I'll talk about in a minute. Let me pull up a plugin, and I just want to cover the basic UI elements. Here we have the preset menu where we have categories of presets. For a number of purposes that uh, you can also save your own presets obviously by using the save parameters option you can also save the parameters as another name if you want to create a different copy you can rename your parameter presets you can delete presets create your own categories delete categories copy all of the settings for a plugin and once you've copied you can paste and you can always go back to the factory default to zero things out. These buttons marked one through five are snapshots. So for example, let me go to the acoustic guitar setting that's in slot one. Now, if I go to slot two, I have the same settings there, but I can change my settings in any of the sections and then go back to slot one and it says I originally recalled and two will recall the modified settings. Here we have the bypass button. When a plugin is bypassed, all processing by that plugin is removed from the audio. And for plugins that have a sidechain input, we have a sidechain source where you can select the signal that you want to use as your sidechain. The 2D card comes with a very basic plugin package. By adding in Plus DSP, you get access to all the plugins within the box. There are two ways to access Plus DSP, one of which is to buy a Plus DSP license and install it in your box. Or if you have a second interface that has a Plus DSP license, we consider that license to be system wide. So if you connect two inter or more interfaces, to a computer as long as one of them has a plus DSP license that license covers every box as long as they're connected to the same computer. Right now I'm working with a Leo 8 which does not have a plus DSP license and I'm going to plug in my ULN2 which does have a license and when I go back to the Leo as you can see I now have all of those plus DSP plugins available as well as the plugin macros, which are pre-configured, more complex effects that we include. And we have the graph. Let me insert a graph and I'll show you how you can work with that. This is sort of the same as the plugin UI in that we have our inserts here, which list all of the plugins that are available to me to use within the graph. And we have our patch menu, which again has categories full of presets and the ability to save graphs, create new categories and copy them. A graph is a DSP processing area where signal comes in on the left and exits on the right. These inputs and outputs are connected with virtual wires. If you hold down control and click on a destination, this will disconnect the wire. All you have to do is click and drag from the destination to drag a new wire to a source. You can also click on a source to drag to a destination. If I connect a source to another destination, it creates a mult. So now input 1 is feeding output 1 and 2. It's important to know that a destination can only be fed from one source. One source can feed several destinations. When I made this mult and drug from input 1 to output 2, that automatically disconnected output 2 from input 2. 
Now, if I drag from input 2 to output 1, my previous path is disconnected, and I've cross-patched inputs 1 and 2. So if I was to run some music, when I bypass this, you'll hear the uh, channel swap. And now I can go and select factory default. By using the graph, you can cross patch things, you can reroute things and insert any of these processes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a stereo summer so that I combine input one and two into a single mono signal and output that to both channels. But when you sum a signal like that, you have to decrease the volume by 6 dB on each channel so that when you add them back together, they come out to be the same level as the two signals separately. I will go into the building blocks and get volume control. Now I can place this wherever I want and grab inputs and outputs to just start routing them. And let me get a summer so I can put my channel summer there. And I can connect those. And then the last thing that I need to do is connect the output of the summer to the graph. By double clicking one of the on screen plugins, that will pull up its user interface. I can click here and set its volume to be minus six. And now I will bypass that and toggle it in and out so you can hear it. One of the things that you can do is you can work within a graph while audio is running. I am going to let music run and put in an EQ and cable it up all while I'm passing audio so you can hear what that's like. If you hold down the option button and click on one of the plugins, it will bypass that. I've decided I don't want that EQ in there. Patch around that. When the plugin is highlighted in blue, if I hit delete, that will just delete it out. This is the basics of using DSP and the graph and how you can build your own processors. As we go along, you're going to learn how to build more complicated processes to do different things for your audio. One of the advantages of doing this is that you can build the processors that you need to fix your problems rather than relying on what someone else thinks you need to do. So sit back and get ready to learn what you can do with Plus DSP.